a ministry wife is a vocation without a job description. And let's be honest, sometimes it seems like ministry might be easier if we did have one. If you are a ministry wife like me and are looking for hope, perspective, and a little bit of practical advice regarding your role, you're in the right place. Hi, I'm Christine Hoover, author of How to Thrive as a Pastor's Wife. Welcome to the Ministry Wives Podcast, a production of the North American Mission Board. Join me as we hear from women from various ministry contexts, having authentic conversations about our shared joys and challenges, even the ones we're unsure we can talk about. No topic is off limits. Today, my guest is Kimberly McGibbon. Kimberly currently serves as the Ministry Director of the Toronto Sin Relief Center, which she sees as the perfect fit for her heart to compassionately serve those on the margins and her strengths of entrepreneurship and leadership. Kimberly has previously served as a Wives Champion for both Sin Toronto and the Canadian National Baptist Convention and has been a church planner's wife for over 20 years. She is married to Jason McGibbon, who is the lead pastor of the Hamilton Fellowship, the most recent of their three church plants, and she is mom to four adult children. I asked Kimberly to come on today to be our representative to talk about ministry after COVID. We have all been affected by COVID in various ways, and Kimberly shares some of those ways she's experienced life after COVID, ministry after COVID, and things that she's learned along the way that she's thankful for to bring into this new season of ministry. So here, friends, is my conversation with Kimberly McGinnon. I'm excited to welcome Kimberly McGibbon to the Ministry Wives podcast. Hi, Kimberly. Hi. So great to be here. It's, it's been great. a long time since yes. we've seen each other. Yes, I've actually gotten to meet you in person. I got to come to your neck of the woods. You live right outside of Toronto. Yes. And I got to be a part of, a, I think it was a SIN Network. Yeah, like it was a, a SPES a, event. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah. So women from all over the area. One thing I had learned about Toronto when I came is how diverse yeah. that area is. Yeah, it's really quite diverse. Like um, just in the last census that came out, um, there is in the greater Toronto Hamilton area, and like I'm from Hamilton, um, they, there are over 200 languages spoken at home besides English. Wow. Yeah, and our, the language most spoken in our area of Hamilton outside of English at home is Arabic. Wow. And then Spanish, right, really close behind it. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, so but, fascinating. Yeah. Like our public schools have, you know, 40 to 50 or more languages spoken in them. Yeah. It's, it's really, it's, it's a really neat place to be. It's a great place for food. Like we have everything. Yes. <laughs> That's, yeah. Yeah. I loved being there. I loved the ladies I got to meet. I love getting to know you. Yes. And so I'd love for you to, we just started jumping around into Toronto, but can you introduce you sure. and your family, yeah. your ministry context? Yeah. So, um, uh, so I've been a church planter's wife for, I was, I was like, oh my, it's been quite a while. So like <laughs> over 20 years. So my husband, uh, I've helped him plant like three churches. And so we, in, the first one we in this area. Okay. Yeah. So we, the first one we were involved in um, was a suburb of, uh, of Toronto, and, uh, and we came to that one quite early on. I think we were at their, I was at their first preview service. I was the scout. And very quickly we got, um, we became uh, just, God just kind of grabbed our hearts for what they were doing, and, and so we became really plugged in there. And then we went and planted a church out of that church um, in um, another suburb. And then from there, uh, that church sent us here to plant in Hamilton, which mm -hmm. I now call home. So, mm -hmm. and now we help church planters and are ascending church for other church planters. It's been a fun, God's done some really crazy things. And so it's been really fun. I yeah. love it. Well, yeah. I, I would love to talk to you about, we're going to talk today about COVID and mm -hmm. ministry life after COVID. And I am excited to have you specifically speak to this because of the Canadian experience of COVID. So you yeah. guys, tell, tell us about how that was for, for you and your church when all the restrictions came in. Yeah, like uh, I think our experience was quite different from the U.S. because our lockdowns were quite different. So we had three separate lockdowns, like full 
lockdowns where you really didn't go anywhere. We were allowed at some points we were allowed less than five people in your house, in your house. You know, you weren't allowed anybody barely other than family. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, most of our churches here in this area um, don't own a building. So uh, I think, yeah, I think we only own two or something in all of the churches that we have. So, uh, so that meant that nobody had access to any of their buildings or anything like that. You couldn't go there to do, because everything was shut down. So you couldn't go there to do, um, you know, even uh, like, like to stream your service from yeah. where you usually met. You, you had to, so, so many of our wives um, became like, and you couldn't have anybody else in your house. So we became like tech gurus overnight. Oh. Like we did not know what we were, well, I'm sure some wives did, but I had no <laughs> idea what I was doing. And <laughs> there we are. We're the ones running the live stream, you know, and our husband is preaching. And uh, I kept, you know, remember, I remember praying uh, before every service, like, please, please, Lord Jesus, do not let me mess this up. You know? Yes. So, um, yeah, so we just last spring so not the spring that just passed but the spring before and in 2022 that that's when we really got rid of our last restrictions for the whole country for the whole yeah so yeah so in Ontario at least like different different provinces did different times but pretty much there was restrictions across the country until about then yeah yeah Mm-hmm. So just a disclaimer before we continue, as yeah. we know, listeners have had a wild variance in experience with, yes. depending on where you live, the kind of restrictions that were in place. So where we lived at the time, Charlottesville, Virginia, we had very similar as what you just described. It wasn't until spring of 2022 that we some of our restrictions were lifted in terms of we were in meeting in a school and the school required us to wear masks in service. And so we had to go along with some of the, some of the restrictions that we were kind of ready to be done with by that point. Yeah. <laughs> um, not just kind of, um, but we know that some people listening, they might not have felt any of these right. challenges, but we, we really are probably speaking more to the people who did, did, who did. face experience because there were so many challenges that came up and I, I would say it kind of came in waves. I don't know how you felt. Yeah. It was like, yeah, I remember, challenges... you know, at the beginning there was that word like, okay, you just have to pivot. I came to really, really not <laughs> like that word because I was, I was, I remember thinking like, I, we cannot pivot one more time. I'm done with pivoting. Yes. You know, and I, I'm somebody who really, I don't mind change and stuff, but there was just, you know, you just feel like you would start, to get things going again, or maybe you could invite, you know, somebody to church and then another lockdown would happen. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, to have, like, in our case, we lost the place that we um, used to meet in, it closed. And so it didn't make it through COVID. So then we had to, in COVID, find another place. Oh, my. Meet, you know, where you weren't allowed to, yeah, during all the restrictions and stuff. And, um, and then also, you know, for people that rent in order to have their church, like uh, they would understand this. You have, you really have to build a relationship with the people that you're renting from. And it's hard to do that when there's so many restrictions and they don't know you and you don't know them. And, yeah, you know, so uh, it, it, it was it was a challenging time for sure. Yeah. Well, I, this what happened for us is COVID really revealed, I would say, I think of it as like a little crack in the, in the ground or the wall and COVID just kind of split those cracks open wide, you know, whatever was already there, whether it was the, some things in the church or something in my own heart, it it really revealed a lot. Mm -hmm. Did you have a similar experience? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Like I think about our ministry, like in our ministry, um, I think it really stripped everything away. Yeah. You know, and, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, you know, always, you know, uh, I think at the end of the day, we realized like Jesus is still Lord, you know, no matter all the challenges or you can't invite this person or you have to check for COVID, like for vaccination certificates, which, you know, was, you know, really difficult. It's hard to invite somebody and then 
you know, on this divisive issue, like you're having to say, but you can only come if you have a vaccine. Like it, that, that part was really hard. Oh, you know? yeah. That, we didn't have that. So that's yeah. a whole nother thing. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about the, the, one of the things that we've seen is, is this divisiveness that has come up. And it infiltrated the church. I mean, there was so much division within the church and over different things, not even COVID, but at least in the States, a lot of the racial issues that came up during that same mm-hmm. period of time. And there was just the political stuff in the States was really at the same time. So I, I'm wondering, could could you speak to some of that division? And I, and I when I say that, speak to, I know that you're just giving words to what people already have experienced, but I'd love for you to just give words to that of what you experienced. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think it was difficult because it was always the elephant in the room. Like you wanted to talk to people about Jesus, but there was also this huge elephant that was just looming, you know, to the side of you or behind you. Like, and, and the more you tried to, if you tried to ignore it, you just couldn't right? Um, But it was so divisive for so many people and everybody had a different opinion and, and it, it was hard to, I think, talk to people about, can we just put that to the side? Yeah. Right. Like, can we just focus on Jesus right now? You know? (laughs) And um, I think, you know, it, for it, when you were talking about that, it showed cracks I think, I think it showed us a lot. I think there was a quote by Timothy Keller. He, I don't know if he was talking about this, but, but I remember thinking at the time, like, wow, that's what it reminds me of, is that he, he said um, that we, if we're really honest with ourselves, that we would prefer Jesus to be a consultant rather than our king. Mm. And I think that was one of the biggest things for me that was hard for me um not that like uh because friendships were you know strained and all that kind of things and people I'd been friends with who you know um who were Jesus followers and uh and you know that we just had differences of opinion of how to follow him during that time yeah. right yeah and so that was really hard and to just keep myself focused on like, okay, am I doing what Jesus has called me to do? Yeah. Right. What's my, what's my calling? What do I know? Like I know, like I know that Jesus has called me to do that I'm going to stand and account for one day. Right. Yes. And so, and that's different for different people. Right. So, but you have to be sort of true to that for yourself, I think. Yeah. You know, it really did bring, it really did draw a line in the sand for us all, I think, to think yeah. about why do we do what we do? Yeah. And what are we going to, how are we going to respond to the uncertainty? And yeah. and that brings me to thinking about my own self and what it showed me about myself. It showed me some things about where I was putting my identity or maybe even expectations that I had that were suddenly stripped away of what yeah. life would look like. And so I'm wondering for you what those things were that yeah. God showed uh, you. <laughs> well, uh, I think the biggest one for me personally was that uh, when everything stopped, you know, and there just wasn't the running around that you usually do. That was just like, for me, I was like, I did not know what to do with myself. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I realized that I was really that that had become part of my identity, the busyness of ministry, the busyness of, you know, helping um, my husband or, you know, our kids, like making sure, um, you know, that that they were doing okay or making sure that they got to whatever they got to, you know, launching them well, all that, all those kinds of things. Um, and my identity as like a mom and a wife, all those things I realized had really crept in. um, And I wasn't seeing myself as um, that my, seeing my identity 
coming out of the overflow of my relationship with Jesus, mm-hmm. right? And so that for me was the, was the biggest thing and the thing that I'm most um, aware of now, post-COVID, mm-hmm. you know, because it's very easy to slip back into that, to yes. the busy, busy. There's, there's so many needs and so many things that require your time and attention, you know, and relationships and all the, all those kinds of things. And it's not that any of them are bad. It's <laughs> that Jesus needs to be number one at all times. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and those other ones have to come up out of the overflow of what, of what our relationship is with uh-huh. him. Yeah. You're kind of speaking to the opportunities that I think, I think God allowed he he used that, at least in my own life, he, he allowed me to see that in a way I would never have seen it otherwise. And it's made me do things a little bit different. You know, coming out of it, it's changed how we do things and how we approach things. And, and some of that personally, some of in our marriage, some with church. So I'd love to kind of move to, okay, we're coming out of COVID. How has ministry life changed for you and your husband based upon mm. the pandemic? Yeah, I think coming out of COVID, um, we really, we're trying to keep the main thing the main thing, right? We realize that like everything that we do, like every person that we work with or like, it's all about discipleship, right? So, um, you know, whether we have mission teams that are coming in and with those mission teams, we're serving our city, it's discipleship on both ends. Like it's discipleship with the mission team, right? And it's discipleship of ourselves. And and it's, you know, discipling those people that we get to meet, uh, that we engage with in the city. Mm -hmm. Um, At, uh, I often, we often talk about like being the welcomer, but then also having the humility to be the welcomed. Mm. I like that. Right. Because I think we're really good. Lots of us are really good in churches and especially pastors wives. Yes. Are very good at being the welcomer, (laughs) really good at being the welcomer. You know, we, we, we're, we look for the person that's on the fringes, you know, that maybe, you know, needs to be brought in. Um, Yeah. That's kind of our thing. Like we, (laughs) right. We bring things to our husband's attention that, you know, he's so busy. He might not, see right um that kind of but we often don't want to have the humility um to be really welcomed so what do you mean by being welcomed yeah i think i think as pastors wives we're really really good at being the welcomer right we uh, we want to make sure everybody's welcome to our churches, welcomed in our homes when, you know, we're doing hospitality and um, we're really good at that. And we're not so used to being the one that gets welcomed in, right? And so, uh, yeah, I think that, um, yeah, I think isolation is deadly. So I think COVID really increased that a lot for pastor's wives. And so I think we have to have the humility to phone a friend. Like (laughs) we need to phone another pastor's wife and be, and say, Hey, like, you know, I, I need, I need help. I need to go and meet for coffee. I need, uh, my quiet time is not very good right now. (laughs) Like, I think we just, we spend a lot of time, um, sometimes not being, super, super honest. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. The hardest place to be honest is in a room full of pastor's wives. That's right. And what, so, is, what is that? Why I can't don't we- know, but we need to be because um, that is the place that we should be really honest. I know. Right. But, and, and because we know, we each know what it's like, but I, I always struggled in those spaces. I don't feel like that's a problem anymore for me, Yeah, but I struggled in those spaces because I would think everybody else knows what they're doing except for me. That's right. I, but everybody thinks that everybody right. thinks everybody else knows what they're doing except for me. Um, you know, that person has like six kids and they homeschool them and they play, you know, piano on Sunday and they do all these things and they run the children's program and like, 
and all their laundry is done. Like, no, <laughs> that doesn't happen. Like, you know, everybody has days where the laundry is not done. It doesn't get folded where, you know, where people in your house are saying, you know, is there anything to eat in here? And you <laughs> like are wondering the same thing yourself and wondering like, when is the adult going to show up uh-huh. and take care of things around here? Right. Yeah. So I think we just, everybody has those days, uh-huh. you know, and, and when we start to really be honest with one another and talk to one another, you find out that everybody's got those days. And so we need, we need to um, be really honest about that there's seasons where we just need to be um, the welcomed, mm-hmm. right? I like that a lot. Yeah. You, you guys have a lot of contact with church planners, church planners, wives there in the Toronto mm-hmm. area. Yeah. So I'm wondering what the wives are saying as they're still, I, I still think we're experiencing kind of the, the, the wave the final waves of uh, COVID and its effects. And so I'm wondering what they're saying of life and ministry after COVID. What are they, what are they still wrestling through? Yeah, I think, um, you know, 80% of our church planters are non-Anglo or non-Francophone. And so that, which means that they were born usually outside of North America. And so they've all come from somewhere else. And a lot of them, some of them will have family here, but a lot of them don't have family here. Um, And so I think that wives, I mean, that was hard, I think, for a lot of people who, for pastors' wives who don't have family close by, COVID was hard, (laughs) you know? Um, And so some are still hurting from those people that left, you know, people that you called friends, people that you had poured into um, and freely, you know, given your heart to, had given access to your family, to your kids, like all, all those kinds of things. Um, and, you know, I think wives are, are tired still. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's exactly. Oh, those two things. We got to talk about those. <laughs> Let's start with the friendship thing because I think everyone experienced it. Yeah. That someone they never thought would yeah. would leave and and sometimes they left because of the decisions around COVID. Yeah. So, can you speak to that? <laughs> what would you say to women listening who are still mourning the loss of a relationship because of yeah. The thing surrounding COVID. I think, I mean, that happened to me. Um, and I think it's in the past 20 years, it's happened lots of times, you know, that people have left for different reasons and some of them have really hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is hard to still keep living open handed, <laughs> you know? Um, but I think, um, I think we got to, we have to go to Jesus with those things. You know, I, he, he above everybody else knows what it's like to have people leave you in the middle of a very terrible time. Like people, his friends left him at the cross, Mm -hmm. right? You know, Peter denied him. Like if anyone is going to understand, it's going to be Jesus. Yes. And, um, I think we really have to, have to work hard to like uh, lay those things with him, right? And really dig into, so why why is it that I keep picking it back up? Why is it that it still hurts so much? You know, why, why is part of the, let yourself grieve. Like sometimes we just move on. We just try, well, I can't think about that and I just need to move on. And next Sunday, I just need to be the happy you know, pastor's wife that's welcoming everyone again and, you know, (laughs) pretending like nothing's wrong. But I think we need to allow ourselves, maybe we don't have to do it publicly, but we need to allow ourselves to grieve. Yeah. And, and we need to, you know, um, have Jesus in the middle of that. I mean, that, that's why he came really Mm -hmm. like that's, um, we've talked a lot here in the Toronto area um, and kind of made Isaiah 61 
one to four kind of just like our real focus for us. I mean, Jesus quoted that Isaiah 61 passage um, when he started his ministry. So he says, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. You know, I, I, the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, right? And he talks about binding up the brokenhearted, setting captives free, um, you know, giving those uh, 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 the oil of joy instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Like, that's for us as well as, you know, as the people that uh, we've come to tell, tell about Jesus, you know. Um, th- that is the good news. Like, that <laughs> right there. You know, that's, that's Jesus came for us. Right. Mm -hmm. To do all those things. And so I think, yeah, I think I need to every day be sort of preaching that to myself. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Again. Yeah. Well, another area is exhaustion. I I do think that what we experienced was it was so much work just to keep the church going during making decisions. And, you know, it wasn't really me making decisions, but supporting my husband, he's making constantly having to change what we're doing and Uh, according to what we can. And so by the end of it all, he was exhausted. And then you're like, now we got to ramp up and kind of get back to normal. And that was really, really challenging. Um, So can you speak to that? Because I know there's probably people still out there that are just exhausted from keeping things together. Yeah. I mean... I think um, I think we need to be honest about that when we're exhausted, and I, you know, I think we need to rest when we need to rest, and we we need to really know that Jesus is the one that's in charge of the mm-hmm. church. Like He's the one that's going to build the church. You know, we really are just supposed to be obedient to what He's asking us to do. For that day like so every day I I remember you know coming out of it um just thinking like I don't even want to go out of my house like I don't want to see people (laughs) you know because we were just tired and things were starting to ramp up and people were inviting you to things and I'm thinking oh I just (laughs) not quite ready for that yet yeah and and so and yet part of me was, like, I missed it all. Yeah. And I wanted things to go back to normal, you know, mm-hmm. that quote-unquote quote unquote, yes. quote unquote normal. Um, but I was also so tired. Yeah. Right? And um, so just, I think, I think again, it's that we, we need to have other pastors' wives that we're talking to, that we can be really, like, it doesn't have to be everybody, <laughs> but you you need one or two that you can really be honest with. Yeah. And um, I mean, that's the part of, for me, the COVID really revealed some really just great, I, God has just provided me with some really amazing women mm-hmm. in my life that um, that I can count on. And the same, and the same uh, when I was talking to my husband, Jason, like the same for him. Like, mm, just, that's great. Yeah, just some people that we can be really honest with. Like, we're really tired, you know, mm-hmm. or, um, you know, we just, we we can't do that this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's okay to, to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the church isn't going to fall apart because you didn't attend one event or, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. You mentioned, too, I mean, I think you're speaking to there are good things that came out. Yeah. There, there are really good things that came out if we have eyes to see. Yeah. And, you know, we might have lost people and we mourn that. Mm-hmm. But in some ways, I think God gave me an eye to see the the harvest is is plenty, right? Yeah. Um, and so I'm wondering for you what opportunities that you've seen that have come mm-hmm. through COVID and that you would say, hey, church, big C church, look, there's right. the harvest is is ready. Yeah. I think there's a couple of things, uh, for, for me, like here in Canada and, you know, I can only speak to like here, but, um, we have seen a huge increase in the amount of people coming to our city. Mm. And so 
uh, that is amazing. People from all over the world are coming here. And that is an incredible opportunity that I can only think that is God ordained, that he, he's bringing us people that um, we can, and other Christians from other countries that we can learn from, hmm. you know, so that my Christianity isn't so Canadian focused, mm. right? I learned so much from my brothers and sisters that are from Venezuela and Mexico and Colombia, like just the way that they worship, the way that they talk about church family is quite different. We're very individualistic, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And they are very like family culture uh -huh. is huge for them, right? And I love when we get together and they talk about family, familia, mm -hmm. you know, and there's just so many things that we can learn from one another. I think that's a huge opportunity. There's a huge opportunity that um, there's people that, are, that aren't in the church that are discontent. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're looking. Mm -hmm. COVID's made them question. Yeah. Like, well, it's made it's, us question things. The COVID has made them question things that, you know, haven't gone to church. Um, and so I think it's a great opportunity for us to engage our city, mm -hmm. you know, and, and when, when we're serving our city, there's always two groups of people. And we talk about this all the time with our church is that there's the people that we're actually serving in that moment, but there are people on the periphery that are watching us serve mm -hmm. and how we serve and what we're doing for the city, right? And they, I've often had really great gospel conversations with those people that are on the outside mm -hmm. that are watching and asking questions like, why? Why, why, are, why are you doing this? You know, and so to be able to um, witness to them about what Jesus is calling us to do, it, it's, it's an incredible thing because he's already working in them to getting them to question about, they know that, you know, our city, like for our city, our city has a, we declared a state of emergency on homelessness, on opioid addiction, um, and on mental health. Wow. So they know we have a problem. Yeah. Right. It's everywhere. You can see it everywhere. So they just don't know what the answer is. But we, like, we have hope that we can bring people, mm -hmm. right? And so um, they're, they're watching to see how we're serving the city. Yeah. And I think it's an incredible witnessing opportunity that we have yeah. moving forward. Yeah, it makes me think of there are losses that, behind us. And mm -hmm. those, those years were hard years. Yeah. But if anything, they refined us, they refined our faith, they refined our focus in ministry. And if we have eyes to see it, there are a whole lot of opportunities before us. And we may we may be doing it a little bit differently than we were doing it before, but maybe that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, do you have any last encouragements for women who are, maybe they still are feeling a little discouragement or there's some sadness that has lingered because of things that they experienced in COVID, what would you leave them with? Hmm. Um, I mean, Jesus is good. Mm -hmm. He's just, he's, he's so good. And if you're tired um, and you're having trouble, like pushing through the fog, like sometimes it can feel like a bit of a fog that you're in, you know, um, if you can, just really remember that, that Jesus is good. But try to go back to your calling of when you knew like you knew like you knew that Jesus was calling you to support your husband in planting a church, whatever ministry it is that he's calling you to. Because there's that moment when you know, you, you know, it's, it's like that moment of decision of you're either going to be obedient to what God has called you to, or you're going to know that you're disobedient, right? And so that's, uh, for me, that was a moment of, like, I think, joy of knowing that, but also, like, ooh, I have a decision to make, mm -hmm. right? And so I think there is joy in knowing your calling, 
right? That, that Jesus is, calls each of us um, to something. And so if you know what he's calling you to, there's freedom in that. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so, yeah. And he's just, he's good. Yeah. That's great. That's a good word to leave us with. Thank you so much, Kimberly, for sharing your experience and your wisdom. Thank you. It was great to (laughs) chat with you again. (laughs) Thanks so much for listening to the Ministry Wives podcast, a production of the North American Mission Board. If you found this content helpful, please subscribe, rate, and review us on your podcast platform or share it with a friend. You can find this podcast and other helpful resources at ministrywivespodcast.com.